Welcome to our sixth edition of the Indian Hill School District's Technology Update. I'm Robert Reed, Technology Facilitator for the Indian Hill Middle and High Schools, and your host for today's presentation. Our topic for this session is on technology in the primary school. Technology has permeated all the Indian Hill schools, including our primary school. Many people ask, what do primary students do with computers? Well, perhaps that question can be answered. We have with us the technology facilitator for the Indian Hill Primary School, Mrs. Marion Herman. She has been instrumental in infusing technology into the primary school curriculum, which encompasses kindergarten through grade two. Marion, welcome to our show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there, there have been uh, quite a few things happening at the primary school with, with technology today, and uh, uh, what are some of those things that have happened? Well, just this year, we got a brand new lab with uh, Pentium computers in it, and that has made a lot of changes in what we've been able to do. One of the things that has changed is that the kindergarten uh, students now come into the lab. Before then, they didn't do that. And so they are coming in for um, learning mathematical thinking. We have a wonderful program called Exploring Math Concepts that teaches them all sorts of um, good strategies for understanding math. And they learn b basic reading skills with uh, stories and more and Reader Rabbit. And they're also using children's writing and publishing. They begin to learn some um, basic word processing and their new writing skills that they're beginning to learn. So kindergarten has really taken advantage of our wonderful systems and are doing great things with it. Hmm, okay. So uh, our kindergartens obviously, kindergarten students are obviously doing things. What about our first and second graders? Well, their teachers are focusing a lot on um, two areas, basically. Um, instead of using it just for teaching uh, areas, content areas, it's more of a creative tool that they use it for. Uh, the first one that I'd like to show you is Hyper Studio. It's a, a multimedia authoring tool that students um, are able to create their own ideas, their own knowledge, and put it into a program. They pre create slideshows, presentations, interactive books and reports, um, and they can incorporate their own art, their own words, even though they're very um, unable to write yet, they can still, with their voice, tell what's going on. The children love the program, and, it, and it's very, very motivating for them. Um, the first stack I'd like to show you that they've done is the Eagle Stack. It was created by Mrs. Espino's first grade students. It has a, a table of contents, and each of these goes to a separate stack that they've created. And this is, they did research, they study uh, symbols, they did research on the symbols, and then they drew pictures and um, wrote down in very simple words what they learned about eagles. They are brown with gray fluffy stuff. Their tails and their heads are white. Their bodies are black and their eyes see far away. Their tails and their heads are white. Their bodies are black and their eyes see far away. Um. The nice thing about HyperStudio is that it lets you find out information from a lot of areas. Um, the kids then, in the other first grade classes, use this program here to learn about what the eagles are like. They could come in, they put on their headphones, and they um, independently could learn from it, the other first eagles grade students. So not only is it a teaching tool uh, for doing the research, but then they also use it the as water further instruction for the other students. Exactly. So students are helping other students the in that Students sense. are helping other students. That's, very, that's exactly true. I'd like to show you another stack now that was created by um, the second grade. One of the things that the second grade study are uh, winter holidays. That's one of their curriculum, social studies curriculum items. And so they, um, to Mrs. M Miss Miller's class, to show other second grades what they had learned, made a HyperStudio stack that is an alphabet book that deals with all of the holidays. 
and it is taking a while to load, but <laughs> it'll be here shortly. As with most technology, it seems to be really slow when you <laughs> want it to be fast. <laughs> that's so. right. That's exactly <laughs> right. And these stacks are very huge, so that they do take a Now, a the, the images, while we're waiting for that to load, the images that you, we were showing on there earlier are things that the children have actually drawn. How did you actually get that into the, into the program? Well, we have a wonderful thing, um, a scanner that just lets the children themselves put the image face down, kind of like you went on a Xerox machine, mm -hmm. and then using a program, they just um, um, press a little button, it scans the image in, and even kids in first grade are able to do this Good. scanning process. Well, that's neat. Okay, it looks like we're ready to go down. This is a Winter Holiday ABC book by Miss Miller. Holiday ABC book by Miss Miller, second grade class. And it just goes through the alphabet. A is for And we tried to capture many of the holiday traditions, not just from Christmas, but from other ones as well. And one nice feature about this is that um, it's also, um, we're able to take these pictures and put them onto the website. So uh, the parents can see this same HyperStudio project at home mm. uh, through their website. Diwali. Diwali, which means row of light, is a festival in India. People dress up in their best clothes, they go out and look at all the lights, and then they have a big delicious cookie. And even the kindergarten has been able to use Hyper Studio. Um, we have one stack that I'd like to show you that they made. They did research in a very, very simple way on animals. They drew a picture of their animals, and then they wrote on children's writing and publishing um, a sentence that tells about what, they, what their um, animal, a little simple fact about their animal. Mm -hmm. They wrote it in their <coughs> own words. There was no editing of their words, so the, the words are in their own phonetic spelling, which is very nice. A lion was hunting animals, but he did not have any dead animals. They have sharp claws. Yeah, this yeah. is the actual, actual student reading their own Exactly. Own this sentence. is their actual student reading their own sentence that they had wrote, that they had written. Um, and they have trouble reading it too, you know, because <laughs> 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 but they have a lot of fun with it. I just love this picture of the lion. It's very nice. Um, Hyper Studio. Okay, um, is Hyper Studio a, a difficult student for the, uh, compu the, the students to learn? No, actually it is a very easy thing for them to use. Um, it is a presentation program like PowerPoint, except that it's even more powerful. It allows uh, web thinking instead of just linear progression but it is designed for young children to use. And with a little input from the teachers, um, maybe giving them a, um, a template to work from, they can very easily create these stacks. So it works out very nicely. OK. Um, what are uh, you know, some of the other uh, parts of, of technology that you'd like to share with us today? Well, I think that um, the other thing that they've really gotten into new this year that's very exciting is the use of the internet. Um, we got a very, very fast T1 line this year, and once that was in place, uh, the kids enjoyed doing research on it. The um, teachers found information for their kids on it, the sites that they could use, uh, and the kids enjoyed publishing on the web themselves. Mm -hmm. That was really an exciting part of it. So it's been a major part. Um, I'd like to show you just a couple of the things that we've done on it. I've got to get Netscape up here and running and okay. I didn't exit Hyper Studio. I may be sorry. Um, 
course, you, you mentioned about this being a, a T1 line. Uh, basically, it's just a fast uh, communication lines that, that transfer data across. Right. Um, the internet, uh, for a long time, was, was text-based. And text-based, you don't need a very fast access. But if you're going to be having a kindergarten and second grade kids, you, um, you need to be able to have pictures. And if you're going to be having pictures, you need to have a fast line, because pictures are really heavy into data, and they take a long time to download if you're doing it uh, just over a modem. So this has made it a wonderful tool for our, for our kids. Of course, what we're doing now is uh, putting in the address of the Indian Hill School uh, website for the primary school. Each of the buildings uh, in, in our district has their own, own website, and they, they're in various uh, degrees of, uh, of completion. And uh, this, as you can see on the screen right now, uh, our own particular address for those of you who have an internet connection and would like to see what's there on your own. Thank you. Um, one of the really exciting things that the second grade did this year um, was start the Virtual Peace Museum. Part of the second grade curriculum is to study um, what peace means to them. It's in conjunction with Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, celebration of his birthday. And they, they talk about peace, they read books about it, and then they wrote and drew what peace means to them. And we created a, a peace museum on the web for everyone to enjoy. You can see it on the screen now. Welcome to the Kids Peace Museum. And it has several different wings. The first, the west wing here, was just what our kids had done. And every single class uh, in, the eighth, in the second grade participated with it. Um, let's see. Let's go into the Miller Room. And it has the picture and then the statement that this person said about what peace meant to them. Peace is being nice and sharing with others and not fighting over silly things. If you click on the picture, you can see it much larger so that you can get a good thing, uh, be able to read the words. It was interesting because the kids, um, they think of peace in much different terms. One child said peace was when my big brother isn't home. So <laughs> <laughs> it has a very real meaning to them, though. Um, in addition to that, then, we asked other schools to take part in our Peace Museum. So it wasn't just our kids in our building. We have about 14 other schools in the United States and three in other countries that have taken part of it. So the North Wing has schools that are uh, in the United States. I'll just choose one here at random. And sometimes they wrote poems, sometimes they drew pictures, sometimes they did both. And then we have our international wing. We have two schools from Canada and one from Bermuda. And they did very nice pictures, too, and what peace means to them. So this project has really become multinational in the sense that, that you have schools from all over the world that are participating and becoming a part of this. Exactly. Um, we, I even uh, recently got an email from a middle school student. This was, I limited this to K through 3 because I thought that that would be a focus that our kids could then come back and visit and enjoy, but a middle school student was studying the Holocaust in Sweden, and he wrote a poem in English and sent it to me, and I'm going to put that mm -hmm. on there too. So yes, it is very international in its scope, and it's very exciting. The kids really enjoyed being a part of it, and um, I think they've gotten a great deal out of it. So well, it nice. certainly has broken down the wall. We no longer have the so-called walls of the classroom as barriers now. Exactly. That, that students can communicate with others. Yes, exactly. Um, we've done other things as well besides this as far as publishing on the web. Um, as I said earlier, I think our first graders study American symbols. 
And so a couple of them, what, what each class does is take a symbol, and then they share their information with the rest of the first grade classes. And two of them decided to do Hyper Studio stacks for their study of the symbol. And then we put those into websites. And then the second grade studies famous Americans too. So we made a whole uh, section called America that has different parts of it on here. One of it was a book about President Bill Clinton. We sent him this book. We haven't heard from him yet, but we assume he's <laughs> just so enthralled with it that he hasn't had time to get back yet. Um, but this is a book that they made. It's, it's a hard copy book as well, but we scanned the pictures in. These are the words that they wrote. And you can just read about the life of Bill Clinton from start to finish. Another section of it, um, this is one of my favorites too, is uh, the famous Americans that the second grade has done. No, that's not it. That was another one. Freedom Fighters. Freedom fighters. The Freedom yeah. Fighters. And they made a road to freedom. And these are the different people, central figures in American history that they feel um, contributed to that. And Mrs. Eberly uh, and Mrs. Johnson did this together, but Mrs. Eberly each year writes songs about history. And the kids recorded these songs, and you can hear their voices right here. Um, Jefferson's one of my favorites. Aha, uh -huh. I don't have that set up. This shouldn't take but a second. Certainly is a wide variety of um, things that, that you're doing with students you, using the, the internet and our, our connection to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, it has many different ways they can use it. They use it for research. There are more and more sites on there now for kids our age. They use it um, to put, to create a body of knowledge for other kids to use. We've gotten email from other classes that said, oh, we really appreciated what you put on there about George Washington because we were looking for information. Mm -hmm. So, it, What I love about uh, the internet most is it <coughs> gives the kids a real sense of a global community, even at, at a very young age. And I think that uh, that's important because if you get to be a high schooler before you realize, oh yeah, there's a world out there, you've missed an awful lot of that development time of appreciating that there are other people who are different and yet very much the same. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, you can listen here to what? What are you doing? Trying to make a deal to make our country bigger for three cents an acre. Jefferson, who would be so mad to make such a deal? Oh my golly, Napoleon. Yeah, it said there wasn't going to be enough room. Yeah. No, <laughs> that was a long one. It takes up a lot of room. The kids had so much fun recording that and, and having fun, and now their parents or grandparents, that's everybody, right. can just hear it from anywhere, so that's very nice. Okay. Well, uh, you, you've shown us a lot of neat things. Uh, how do you see the, the, the technology growing in the primary school next year? Well, we are very fortunate that we're having a new addition built. It'll have eight new rooms, and each of those are being uh, fitted out a state-of-the-art technology. They will have five, a mini lab of five computers in each room. And plus there will be two external mini labs of 10 computers. So f I see there being a lot more access for the teachers, for the kids, and that because of that, this sort of thing will just expand and be done more and more. Uh, the teachers themselves are seeing more uses of it. It's getting to be um, just another one of their teaching repertoire behaviors that, that they know is so effective. So I just see it, it being the same and better, mm -hmm. more of the same. Well, Mary, we really like to thank you for participating with us and, and sharing with us all the things that the students are doing at the primary school. Obviously, the primary school is not the same as I remember <laughs> it, of course, when I attended many, many years ago, but, but even when I was uh, instructing down in the lower levels, that uh, there, there's been so many changes as a result of technology. It has. It, it's doing a wonderful thing. And thank you very much for having me here. Okay. You're most welcome. Present. 
Well, as you can see, there have been many changes uh, in, in the primary school education today. But before we leave, I'd like to remind you that our Cyber Studio classes uh, and Open Computer Labs have concluded for this school year. I'd like to thank all the participants in this endeavor. This new initiative was uh, very successful based on the evaluation comments and the number of community members who participated. Now, if you've enjoyed this edition of our Technology Update program, be sure to look for future presentations during the next school year. Each month, a new technology-related topic will be presented on some current aspect of educational technology in the Indian Hill Exempted Village School District. Now, for program times, you can call the ICRC at 772-4272. And this concludes our sixth and final edition of the Indian Hill Schools Technology Update for the 96-97 school year. A special thanks to all of our staff and students on both sides of the camera for making this presentation possible. Now this is especially true for one important member of our crew, Anthony DeMarco. His expertise has been invaluable in our productions, but unfortunately he graduates this year. All of us here in the Indian Hill Schools wish him the best. So see you next year and have a great summer. Today on Technology Update, we'll profile a new way for students to use technology in schools. Tech guru Luke has a computer upgrade tip you can do yourself. And video technology instructor Dennis Dupps will join us to give some helpful tips on how to make your holiday home video better. All of that and much more next on this edition of Technology Update. For this edition of the all-new Technology Update, your source for the latest in technology news you can use. I'm Robert Reed. Today, and on every show, we'll cover the latest in technology news, offer technology tips which you can do yourself, and give some advice from tech experts to make your wired world just a little easier to live in. But first, let's take a look at what's making today's tech headlines. While it might have appeared that the browser wars were over and won with Microsoft Internet Explorer victory, Netscape announced today a new version, 7.01. Now, this new version being rolled out to America Online users surprises many market watchers because of AOL's decreasing revenues. Today's move may lead to a $30 million revenue loss for the company. With AOL's uh, stance today, many web watchers expect this to spell the end of the viability of that pop-up ad format, leading uh, to consumers to take a hard-line stand against this popular advertising format. MasterCard announced the test of a new payment system which may eliminate the need for cash at locations such as movie theaters and fast food establishments. The system, called MasterCard PayPass, allows consumers with specially credit cards to simply tap or wave their cards against a reader to make their payment, rather than having to swipe a card. If the value of the purchase is under a certain amount, the cardholder needn't even sign a receipt. Now, MasterCard is testing the system with a handful of merchants in Orlando, Florida. The company said Thursday. Now they include Chevron, McDonald's, Lowe's, Universal Cineplex, Wolf Camera, and the City of Orlando's parking department. Now this technology isn't new, however. Exxon Mobil Speed Pass is already in use at many mobile stations nationwide, allowing users to simply wave a wand at the pump and get their gas. For the second time in a week, Microsoft acknowledged that its initial estimation of a software flaw was underrated and the true threat posed by a vulnerability. The Redmond Washington Giant said Thursday it plans to change the severity of a vulnerability in software common to Internet Explorer and other Windows applications from important to critical. 
The move was prompted by an in-depth analysis written by security researchers who found the flaw. According to the alert, the flaw might allow another user to take control of another user's computer or to allow a backdoor program to be run on an innocent user system. Coming up, laptops are making their way into the high school classroom and having great results. Technology is a bigger part of our lives than it was 10 years ago, and nowhere is it more obvious than in schools. At Indian Hill High School, computers were implemented in 1989 and shortly thereafter at schools across the nation. Classrooms once used for instruction became computer labs filled with desktop computers. But today, students have the computer labs where they need them and schools get more classrooms. Larry Shields has more. Arlene Legal expects laptop learning to become a common solution in the future, citing a hope for all students to one day have their own wireless laptop computers to use during the school day. Is your old computer slowing you down? Think the only solution is a costly one requiring a service call? Not so, says Guru Luke. It's an upgrade that you can do yourself for under $100. Luke? It's a time of year where the family camcorder is as common as eggnog. But will that video look good when you and your family watch it? Video instructor Dennis Dupps is up next to show you some pro secrets to help you shoot your holiday video better. All that and much more when Technology Update returns.